All right, so uh, my name is Joe Stein. Uh, welcome everyone. You are now part of the Kafka community. So appreciate uh, everyone with their little contributions. Um, uh, I first want to thank Cloudera for the food and the drink. Um, they're sponsoring this uh, meetup. So thank you, Cloudera, for some awesome grub. And also uh, Top Ad for hosting us, uh, cool offices. Great, so um, we have some great speakers tonight, so I don't want to take up too much time, but uh, for folks that maybe have no idea what Kafka is, I at least want to try to leave you with a little bit of knowledge. Uh, so my name is Joe Stein. I've been involved with the project since it got open source from LinkedIn uh, and incubated to Apache. Uh, I blog and podcast online. I'm all things Hadoop on Twitter. Uh, I do some tech stuff as well. Happy to talk to people later about it. Uh, so these slides are online. I'll post them to Twitter. There's a whole bunch of links so you can go and get all good sorts of information. Uh, Kafka.apache.org, uh, Kafka source code, it's an open source project. Go in and look at how everything is done. Uh, the documentation is amazing. Uh, really informative and rich docs. Uh, so you know, spend time reading and understanding it. And um, the wiki. Uh, the wiki could probably use a little bit of work. So uh, always looking for more folks to jump in and help contribute. So if you see something that maybe you want to change, go change it. All right, so Kafka, what is Kafka? <clears throat> so Kafka is basically a system that allows you to break apart all the different components within your infrastructure, right? And allow you to have like this central commit log for sending all of your data to it, right? So if you think of something like a database that has a commit log, right? And you may use it for like queuing, even though you should never do that. Um, Kafka is a commit log for your entire data center and entire infrastructure, right? You can throw hundreds of terabytes of data at it and it'll be fine, right? Millions of requests per second, you're good to go. And the decoupling part comes in where the producers basically don't have to know about all of the downstream processing that has to happen, right? So if you build ETL systems, you kind of get into this like cross N squared problem of having to interconnect all the transformations and everything else. And Kafka allows you to basically not have any of those problems and do everything in real time. Uh, the structure, uh, besides producers and consumers and the brokers, you kind of have this topic, right? Topic is like this virtual structure of partitions. Partitions are actually log files, like literally log files on disk. And uh, you basically write to these partitions. Uh, they're all sequential writes, right? So Kafka guarantees ordering uh, on a partition basis. And as you write, they're continually uh, appended to the end of the partition log. Um, Kafka's uh, high throughput distributed messaging system we thought of as a commit log. Uh, Jay's the one who rethought that, and he's going to talk to you about all sorts of cool stuff. So I will not even attempt to steal his thunder. But um, this is kind of how I look at Kafka, right? So here's your distributed commit log, right? And then you've got consumers coming in, and they're basically fetching at different points in the commit log, and then producers are writing to the end of the commit log. A uh, whole bunch of other stuff too. So producers, right, there's batching. Uh, a lot of the performance comes from being able to batch a whole bunch of messages uh, in one send. Um, there's compression. Compression is actually at rest, so you can compress something and it'll sit there compressed. Uh, there's both uh, synchronous and asynchronous producers. Um, there's a whole bunch of other variations now of what you can do to uh, throttle durability in uh, the next version that's coming out. Uh, replication, and as I said, sequential ordering and guarantees for each partition. Um, this is really where Kafka is different. You know, it's like, oh, wh why can't I just use RabbitMQ? Well, RabbitMQ is gonna fall over if you throw like a couple gigs per second at it, right? Um, but the consumers, right, they pull the data. So this is very different from typical messaging systems. Typical messaging systems are gonna push you the data. Right? The broker is going to kind of transactionally know where the consumers are on the stream. And in Kafka, it doesn't work that way. In Kafka, the consumer says, hey, I want to get this. Uh, I want to go to this part of the stream, and I want to read you know, a megabyte after it. And then the broker goes, OK, and then gives you know, the consumer its uh, data. So you can scale out the consumers uh, you know, to thousands of consumers without the brokers really even caring. Um, Kafka also uses zero copy. I don't know if anyone's familiar with like zero copy. It's like a function in file channel, like Java NIO, basically transfer to. Um, makes everything kind of stay in kernel space and saves a whole bunch of context switches. So if you're doing any socket writes and you're not using file channel, uh, you should. Um, so there's a whole great write up um, on the docs and a great article from IBM about 
why you should use uh, kernel copies uh, for moving data over sockets. Um, and then messages stay on disk. So unlike messaging systems, you know, you kind of pop the data, it's gone from the queue. Uh, Kafka is all about keeping your data for a while, right? It's a transient system. It's not meant to store your data forever. But if you want to keep it around for a day or a week, go for it. Um, it's meant to do that. Uh, which is a great feature too, so you can always go and replay your logs, right? You could always go back and kind of rerun things if you need to as well. Uh, lots of client libraries. So from, you know, from Kafka's perspective, everything is kind of governed by this wire protocol. So if you're interested in bytes and byte buffers and moving data over sockets, check out the wire protocol. Uh, it does a really good job explaining how Kafka talks to itself and with producers and consumers. Um, but there's a whole bunch of consume, uh, libraries that have been built for producing and consuming data with Kafka. Um, lots of folks in the community have kind of gone and supported these. Um, check them out, all right? So whatever language you are interested in, if there's not one there, hit me up. Love to help you build a new one. Um, and I've got a really quick start. So if there's any folks who know Scala and want to start really quickly with Kafka, you can uh, go to github.com slash stealthly slash Scala Kafka. And this will basically spin up a Kafka VM and a whole bunch of sample code to kind of get going with Kafka, uh, Kafka right away. Um, same thing for Go. So if anyone does Golang stuff and wants to jump into Kafka, go check out uh, Stealthy Go Kafka and you know have some fun. All right. Cool. So no questions. This slide is just there. You're not allowed to ask questions because <laughs> we've got a bunch of speakers and I'd like them to get started. So first, uh, Jay Krebs.